How do you catch a serial killer? Well, it seems with a lot of time and a dogged determination to follow every single lead. Over the weekend, Sergeant Keshi Mabunda was rewarded for his efforts in making sure serial killer Rosemary Nomi Andlovo is where she belongs, firmly behind bars. He received the Detective of the Year Award during the SAPS National Excellence Awards. Now, you'll remember in 2021, Andlovo was convicted of killing five family members and her partner for the insurance money and also trying to plot the murder of her sister and her sister's children. Sergeant Mabunda joins me now. Sergeant, congratulations on your award. What an incredible thing you did in getting Rosemary and Glovo behind bars. Um, I wonder if you could take us to the moment that you realized not only was Glovo definitely a serial killer, but you had connected all the dots and had all the evidence to prove it. Thank you very much. It was not easy but it takes a lot of time, determination, dedication. And like, uh, like you, when you investigate your, your, your colleague, he knows exactly what you're doing. He can call the system, check what you want to do. So it's not easy. She was still an active police officer when you started investigating her, was she? She was a police officer, active, going to work every day. Then uh, when I was just surprised, uh, I mean, uh, when, she, when the, a lover was killed, the way she behaved by bringing a bunch of uh, insurance policies. That time I was not the initial investigator of the case, but I said, no, this one I'm taking it. Because the way in which uh, this person can have this insurance, company, it doesn't make sense. So at what point um, did, did you start investigating the case and, and when did it all start sort of coming together for you? Uh, it was 2015 <laughs> and she was arrested in 2018. So um, when, when the lover, um, Maurice Mabasa, was killed, she came to the police station with a bundle of insurance. My colleague was investigating the case. So as he signed those insurances, I asked him, what were you doing? He said, I was sending insurance. I said, no, what? Call that person. Make copies of this insurance uh, policies. Then I just tell her that I want to file it in the case docket. Then she came back and made copies. Then we filed them. After she left, I took the docket. I said, from today, I'm going to investigate this case. What raised your suspicions? The bunch. You can't have those. Just so many. So many insurances. That's it's, it's incredible. It's, it's unbelievable. So what? So, so she was caught, uh, am, I understand, uh, and, uh, am I correct, that um, she was trying to hire a hitman to kill her sister and her sister's children, and the hitman recorded her. Is that what eventually led to her being caught? Uh, yes, it added, but I was about to arrest her. Really? Because, uh, because I had uh, about three active cases which, uh, where she killed her first sister in 2020, uh, the cousin in 2012. And he, when she insured him, he said she's her husband. Then when she killed her sister in 2013. So all these cases, I already connected, connected them together. But that time, she was not aware that I'm investigating here that time because I was under threat. Oh, I, and we'll get to that. I want to ask you the first time you met her face to face. And, and what did, at what time and what point in the investigation was that? And what are your impressions of her? She, one of the insurance companies, after uh, I... I uh, informed her that they mustn't pay, pay her. Uh, they informed her that we can't pay you your money because Sergeant Mabunda said we mustn't pay you, he's still investigating you. She came to my office furious. Why are you telling people that they mustn't pay me? I, I had to be calm there and humble. And I, I said, who's that company? She informed me. I said, let's phone the company. We phoned the company. They pick up the phone, I speak to the, to the forensic investigator there, it was a lady, and I said, please, I didn't say that you mustn't call, you mustn't pay her. Please pay it her money. She heard it, we were in, in my office, mm -hmm. and she left my office. After she left, I saw that she's outside the gate, I made a redial, called the lady, please call her again, say that it's not my bunda, but we are, you guys are still investigating. So if, but don't pay her. Then they phoned her, they said, no, it's not my bundle, it was mistaken. And, so, and why did you, why did you, were you under threat at that stage? When she came, she said, no, she was furious when she came to my office. 
because I'm telling people not to pay her the money that she was supposed to, to get it from the insurance companies. That time I already had, uh, put the idea on the spotlight yeah. that no, they mustn't pay uh, her any money. And I would imagine you also didn't really want to raise her suspicions while That's you correct. were that continuing. Day, that day I changed that docket and not to be on my name and book it to my then branch commander. It was a kennel. Uh, did she actively try and get you killed? Yes, she did. How did she, what was she doing? Uh, she was in prison. Then uh, it happened that she infiltrated my informer, who is now in, uh, in witness protection. Uh, she had told him that, no, you know what, maybe please tell my boon that you meet somewhere, they're going to organize people to that can kill him. Because that time I was um, opposing bail. Mm. So I stand, I opposed bail for Rosemary for two years, standing in, two years opposing bail, making appeal after appeal. And, and this is the thing, you know, you have to work, not only do you have to gather evidence painstakingly, and I know that you worked overtime and you worked uh, on weekends and you had to become obsessed with this, but you had other cases, different cases that you had to work on at the same time. That's correct. And I won them. I, mean, I know when I, oh, I went, <laughs> I sent this guy about uh, 45 years for murder. Wow. Uh, I, I'm not talking about the lighter case, we were serious cases. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, it's well known, the, the heavy burden placed on our detectives. We just don't have enough detectives. So how do you stay sane in all of it? Can I come again? How do you stay sane? How do you keep going? You've still got a smile on your face. <laughs> no, when you are dedicated and you said you have to save the nation, uh, you want to see justice uh, prevail. Yeah, you can be killed any time, but uh, as long as you see that, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's your colleague or what, but make sure you must stay focused. Let uh, people have justice. Now the families are happy. The, the mothers uh, of the deceased, they are happy. They are calling me now. They are greeting. We are family with I mean, my... Uh, so, so it must be, I mean, despite all that hard work, you know, um, enormously rewarding when you get a breakthrough like that. It must, be, it must be wonderful to know that some justice has been served by you uh, helping to create this conviction. But it seems she's still up to no good. Just earlier this year, Rosamund Glover was found with a cell phone. I mean, here's, here's my question. You know, th this is a woman who's threatened your life and, and has even apparently threatened the life of your child. So how concerned are you that she's going to continue to try and cause trouble, even behind bars? In fact, I, I was sent that photo when she took it, uh, she was in prison. So after getting that photo, I said, no, something's not right here. Then... What photo is this? The photo. She took a selfie in, in, in prison. She posted it on social media. So, they, so it was all over. Oh. So that raised alarm. Then they, she was searched and they found, they found her with a cell phone in prison. So when she appears in Kempton Park in one of the cases, which is sub, I can't talk about that case because it's still sub sub -judicate. then uh, I on the side speak to one of the guys, guys who are escorting him. This person is having a cell phone. Here's the pick. <laughs> that week she was found with a cell phone. So it doesn't sit well with me, mm. but she can, she's capable of doing anything. What's the secret to cracking a case? Oh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you have to be dedicated in your work. Uh, though it takes a lot of effort, uh, Section 205, driving a lot, obtaining statements, you just connect whatever you have. Little thing that you have connected. And uh, investigate in order to arrest. Even though you know that um, Mabunda did this, it's him. But make sure you complete the investigation before you arrest that person. That is the reason why it was so easy for, for me to convict the lady. But I have done, it took me three years mm. investigating the uh, Rosemary. Wow. And, and winning the award uh, at, the, uh, at the awards over the weekend, you got Detective of the Year. What does that mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot. More especially, uh, there were people from outside South Africa who were invited by the, our committee. Uh, ministry and commissioners. So you become number one, being a village boy, you come from a rural area, then <laughs> here comes a person <laughs> unknown from Guyane, Lipompo. You see that? <laughs> I was overwhelmed. 
It's really happy. I'm, 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 I think it's amazing, and I think you're an example to everyone about, mm -hmm. you know, that detailed police work really is what is required to get the convictions. Um, thank you for taking the time. Thank you very much. To come into studio. It's been really thank lovely you. to meet you. you. <laughs> and keep up the good work. We want all those serial killers being no, I'll and, you, and, and Unfortunately, in South Africa, we have a lot of work to do. No, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much okay. for your time. Amazing. Detective of the Year, Sergeant Keshi Mabunda. Speaking